Venture capital has always been a daunting and for some creators, out of reach means of financing. But the internet has accelerated the rise of crowdfunding, websites where members of the public can put money behind any project that they really believe in. And there's none more well known than Kickstarter. But how does crowdfunding actually work? Why should you donate your money to someone else's project? And what separates Kickstarter from every other crowdfunding website out there? Here's how it happened. The idea of crowdsourcing turning to a large group of people to ask for goods, services or just cash in order to help achieve a certain goal can be traced back as far as the concept of democracy. Even an election involves politicians pleading to the general public in the hope of gaining their trust and when enough people buy in, turning their manifestos into a reality. Crowdsourcing later took the form of contests and competitions whenever someone needed help with an ambitious project. For example, during the 1950s, the Premier of New South Wales in Australia proposed an international design competition that would decide the architecture of the Sydney Opera House. The contest was won by Jorn Olsen of Denmark, with the now iconic shell structure that is known across the world. Meanwhile, crowdfunding refers specifically to the raising of capital in order to finance a desired venture. The advent of the internet has provided a catalyst for these sorts of projects, but this is far from a new concept. In 1885, the Statue of Liberty had arrived in New York City disassembled, with the US unable to afford the $250,000 it would cost to construct the statue's 46-metre-high pedestal. The city's authorities were $100,000 short, and so the local New York World newspaper launched a public fundraiser, inviting residents to donate to the cause, and in return their name would be engraved on the statue's base. $101,000 was raised from a over 160,000 different donors, including children, the elderly, and even the homeless, making the average donation less than one dollar. This is effectively the same model as Kickstarter, where individuals can back potential projects that they find interesting and in return become the first to get their hands on the product upon release. The website was launched in April 2009 by co-founders Perry Chen, Yancy Strickler and Charles Adler. Other crowdfunding sites like Indiegogo were already up and running, but what set Kickstarter apart was its emphasis on creativity. All Kickstarter fundraisers must have a set goal, whether it's the release of a product product, an album, a book, or whatever the project creator sets out. Charities, or projects that offer financial incentives like equity, are not eligible to crowdfund on Kickstarter. The website itself quickly raised $10 million from VCs, including Union Square Ventures, and the likes of Jack Dorsey of Twitter, Vimeo's Zach Klein, and Flickr founder Katerina Fake. It was named as one of Time Magazine's best inventions of 2010, and by 2012 had raised over $300 million to over 20,000 successful projects. Kickstarter operates on an all-or-nothing basis, meaning that a creator sets their funding goal and a deadline, and if that target is not reached, all backers are refunded whatever they've pledged. Although the founders believed most of Kickstarter's projects would be in the creative arts, the website has garnered considerable success in the tech industry too. The first project to break the $1 million barrier in funding was Casey Hopkins' Elevation Dock for iPhone, while the most funded ever project is the Pebble Time smartwatch, which alone raised over $20 million, despite having a target of just 100000 Co-founder Chen stated that the team haven't actively supported the use of the term crowdfunding, instead seeing themselves as a middle ground between patronage and commerce, meaning backers may be receiving an actual Pebble watch in return for their $179 backing or just an artistic experience. The latter best applies to music and video. For example, in 2013, a few years after the Veronica Mars TV show was cancelled, screenwriter Rob Thomas and star Kristen Bell created a Kickstarter campaign to fund a feature-length film, which raised over $5 million in the space of just one month. It led to the release of the movie exactly one year and one day after the creation of the Kickstarter page. Several of Kickstarter's creative projects have received critical acclaim, attracting a total of 17 Academy Award nominations. 
Wales, with 2012's Innocente and 2018's Period End of Sentence both winning the award for Best Short Documentary Feature. So if you've got an idea for a board game you'd like to create, or you're looking for funding to publish your first novel, Kickstarter might be the way to go. So how does the website actually generate its own revenue? Kickstarter simply places a 5% commission on any fund that reaches its goal, and an additional charge of between 3 and 5% also goes to the company that manages the payment process, Stripe. More than $5 billion has been pledged since the website's launch, bringing an after-tax profit of $1.3 million last year. But the current CEO, Aziz Hassan, has said that Kickstarter will have to adapt if it wants to survive. Amid the 2020 pandemic, the company laid off nearly 40% of its workforce as the public's creativity and generosity began to dry up. Who knows where crowdfunding could take us next, or what Pebble's record-breaking successor might be. And that's how it happened. Thanks for watching.